Okay, alcohols. Here's a sample alcohol. You can copy these if you want. So you can write the H's if you want. You don't have to. I'm going to write the H's so everything is perfectly clear. And I'm drawing them in the structural formula way so that you don't get confused with the line drawings. As long as it has an OH in it, like this one does, it's going to be considered an alcohol. Does it not need to be at the end like the picture shows you here? Does not need to be like that at the end. It can be anywhere. As long as there's an OH, it's an alcohol. And there are certain rules for alcohols right here. So refer to this little piece of paper. It says, for alcohols, drop the E from the ane ending and add the appropriate suffix. The suffixes are down here. So the alcohol suffix is OL. And start with naming the chain like we always do. So how many carbons is that? Four. four. So four carbons is butane. But drop that E. Go with that so far. How do we know it's butane? We know it's butane because it has four carbons. And they're all single bonds. Is that always butane? Yes. Yes. Oh. Drop the E. And we add the suffix. The suffix for an alcohol is OL. So butane now becomes butanol. Okay? OL means alcohol. Bute means how many carbons? Four. four. And we're on to the next one. That's as easy as it's going to get, unfortunately, for you. The next one are called halides. The next easiest. Halides look very similar, except instead of having an H or an OH there, we're going to have a different functional group, like let's say a F for fluorine. So take a second to copy if you want. No, it's usually the group seven elements, and they're listed right here for which ones are most common. <laughs> Not all sneaky sevens, no. <coughs> so this is fluorine attached to this carbon chain. The rules for naming a halide, keep the ane ending, and then use the fluoro chloro prefix and indicate where, Okay, like we always do, indicate where. The prefix for... Fluorine is fluoro, which we'll get to in a second. Let's start with the root name first. One, two, three carbons is what? Uh, Prop. Prop. And you keep the end ending, so it's propane. And we say what this is and where this is now. The odd man out is this fluorine. So the prefix for fluorine, if you look back on this piece of paper, is fluoro. Let's say that. Fluoro. And we should also say where it is. What carbon is that on? It's on the first carbon from the right. That's the smallest number, so we call it one fluoropropane. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so but there's only one, so you have to say where. Where? Yeah, but there's just one of them. Right, there's just one of them, but we have to still indicate because it could be here or there. Yeah, but don't you have to have like the... Oh, mono prefix? No, but you would use dye if there were two of them. <laughs> you never use mono for organic chemistry, but you do use dye. So let's do an example, like a 2B, we'll call it. Um, I don't care either way. Probably not, but I'm not going to be mad if it is. So if there's just more than one, then you use that? Yeah, let's do one where there's more than one, because you will see that on this kind for sure. Whenever we decide to test. Tomorrow. Um, that can get more complicated, but we can do that as well. You just say, you know, if this, if this is chlorine, you would say, what, 2-chloro, 1-fluoro, propane? There's no test tomorrow, I was just kidding. All right, two fluorines here. Does not matter where they are, point up, point down, point left or right. Doesn't matter as long as you just say what carbon it's on. This is on the first carbon, this is on the second carbon. So we would say one and two for where they are. And now since there are two of them, you do need to use the dye prefix. And we stick with fluoro. And then again, it's three carbons, which is propane. So one, two, difluoropropane. How did you find one, two, One. <coughs> Two, just the numbering the carbons. Nope. Yes. Fun, right? Wait, it gets better. <coughs> Let's move on to ketones. How about six? Is that enough? <laughs> Six. 
six carbons. So this piece of paper comes in. Don't want to go back to it. Uh, if you want to identify it as a ketone, you'd say, oh, well, it's got some carbons over here. It's got some carbons on the right side. And in between is this carbon double bonded to an O. And that's what this is. Carbons over here, carbons over there, and then carbon double bonded to an O. That's called a ketone. Okay? And the rules for ketones are right here. It says, drop the E from the ending and add the appropriate suffix for ketone on the ending is O-N-E. So we say one, two, three, four, five, six carbons is what? Hex. hex. Should we hexane? We're going to drop, oh, sorry, I forgot the X. H-E-X-A-N-E. Whoops. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> there we go. I got it. I got it. You don't use double bonds only... So you don't use an E and E ending only when it's between carbons, not between carbon and oxygen. So we call it hexane because all the carbons are single bonded. But then this part indicates right here, oh yeah, that is a ketone. So you add the appropriate suffix, which is O-N-E. And the suffix is found on this piece of paper here, which you'll lose later. And you should also say where it is. Which carbon is that on? Two. Second carbon. So two hexanone is correct. Two is the where. Hex is the number of carbons. Own is the ketone part. And the ketone part is right there. One, two, one. Continue. After ketones, you've got aldehydes. Aldehydes look like ketones, except they are at the end of a chain. I know it's exciting news for you. <coughs> so copy that picture down. Seven. What you know about seven? <laughs> if you remind me later, even though it's probably wildly inappropriate, I'll show you the skit I'm talking about. Uh, no. All right. Aldehydes. How do you identify them? Well, take a look at the paper. Aldehydes have... Some number of carbons on the left or right, doesn't matter where they are. And then it ends with carbon bonded to an oxygen and then an H. It's always on the outside. It could be on the, it, this part could be on the right side or left side. In this case, it's on the right side. Identify it because it has this H. So here, there is carbons on the other side, but there is, is at the end, is at the end of the, of the line. So when you name it, uh, you, for the rules, you go back to this. For the rules for aldehydes, drop the E and add the appropriate suffix, the suffix is AL. So this is one, two, three, four carbons. That's butane, B-U-T-A-N. Drop the E, and then add the AL suffix, so it's butanal. Excuse me? You don't have to say where it is, because it's always at the end. So you don't need to say where this one is. There's aldehydes, by definition, will always be at a terminal end of a chain. So good, right? One more easy one, then there's the hard ones. Should I continue? Yeah. DJ, should I continue? Yeah. That's the spirit. Okay, organic acids, number five. This is the acid that makes vinegar so delicious. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> um, this is, well, we should write it first, I guess. So for organic acids, you identify them because on this piece of paper, which you'll refer back to a lot this year, I'm sure, organic acids have some carbons over here, and then carbon double bonded to an O with an OH at the end, which is exactly what this looks like, carbon double bonded to an O with an OH at the end. To name them, refer to the easily losable sheet, 
Acids are somewhere on here. There you go. Drop the E and add the suffix. The suffix is anoic acid. So this is how many carbons? F. F A N. Drop the E and add anoic acid. F anoic acid. Organic chemistry is kind of crazy because not only is there this, what you would call like its technical name, but there's also common names for these things as well for many of them, especially the lower chain molecules. And this is one that's called acetic acid, which makes your balsamic vinegar delightful. I don't know. I screwed up. I'm stupid. You don't have to put a one because, again, these acids, if you look at the drawing of them, they're always at the end, right? always at the end. There's a bunch of carbons over here and then the acid part at the end. So you don't need to indicate a one. Good question though. All right, let's get serious though. Let's stop messing around. Real talk. Real talk. <laughs> Hashtag real talk. Hashtag esters. It's too many hashtags. You're crazy. <laughs> Sad. I'm going to go back and find it and favorite it. <laughs> I would do that for you. But then people are like, why is this creeper favoriting things from like 30 years ago? Okay, that's too many years. I blew that joke. Not yet, but a little, in a little bit I do. This is an ester. Check it out, kids. Esters. Carbon's over here. Some carbons on the right side, and in between, you've got this carbon double onto an O with an O off to the right. That's what we call an ester. Esters are weird. They have a weird set of naming rules. Let's read them together. It says, for esters, the last one, name each chain right to left, so that's backwards, and use the YL suffix and add the O8 ending. Okay, that gets kind of crazy. But there's two chains here. There's this one carbon on this side, and there are three carbons on that side, and they're separated by this O. So we name each chain and then add the O8 ending. So the first one on the right side is methyl. Right, one carbon, add the YL ending. I'm just doing what this set piece of paper says. And then how many carbons is this? Three. Three. You go with propane, and then drop the E and add the appropriate suffix. The appropriate suffix is O-A-T-E. And that's, again, from right here. Esters are o eights. So you call us methyl propanoate. Methyl for the right side, propanoate for the one, two, three carbons on the left. What's that? It's a cool word, right? You don't, because they, this tells you, since you know it's an ester, this tells you that on the right side you've got one carbon, on the left side you've got three carbons. So you don't need to indicate where, it's telling you where. Last one is ethers. This is what you use if you want to knock someone out and abduct them. Just FYI, DJ. And I speak from experience, you guys. Yes, this is mostly how I got married. Uh, there's actually unshared electrons, which I'm not drawing them because you don't care, but it doesn't have any H's. We didn't do Lewis structures, so that probably makes not a lot of sense to you, but as they say in the frats, it is what it is, brah. I don't know if they say that. I'm assuming they do. That sounds like a fratty thing to say. Should I go? Okay. Ethers. Identify an ether because an ether has carbons on the left, carbons on the right, and it's got an O by itself in the middle, just like this one does. Carbons left, carbons right, O by itself in the middle. Ethers have their own naming system, which is right here. Name each chain from left to right. So this one's left to right, and add the YL suffix for both branches. So this is, on the left side, how many carbons? Ethyl. Ethyl. Two carbons. On the right side, how many carbons? Probe. Probe. Prop. 
And then this one you give the YL suffix as well. And then ethyl, propyl, and then you just use the word ether. So it's telling you on the left side there are two carbons, on the right side there are three carbons, and it's an ether, which means there's an O that separates the, the two of them. Pretty great, right? You always, add ether you always add ether for ethers. Just remember, it, when you're pouring it onto the rag to shove in someone's face, always add the word ether. And that is a good